Hey friends, it's Allison. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be playing with this new layering stencil from Waffle Flower Crafts. And we're going to be making a couple cards that are quite different looking from each other. So this is the stencil set we're going to be using. This is the folk art background stencil. And there are two stencils. So you'll see when they're together, they form this kind of star that you would kind of see like in a quilt pattern. And then when you separate them, you have, you know, just part of the star. So what I'm going to do is create a mask or kind of a negative mask. And I at first wanted to just cut a circle with a circle die and make it easy on myself. But the circle wasn't really the right size and then the smaller one would have been too small. So what I'm doing is just tracing part of the stencil onto this little piece of paper. And I'm just going to cut it out and create my own shape. Now, what I realized after I cut it out is it was just too close to the edge and this little piece of paper just wasn't big enough. It wouldn't have really helped, helped me do what I'm trying to do, which you'll see in a moment. So I cut it out again and that is just perfect. And I'm going to do that five times because I'm going to be using five different colors to stencil with. So I have my five and a half by eight and a half grip mat and an A2 sized piece of paper. And that's going to grip the paper and the grip mat will also grip the stencil. And now I can blend my colors without worrying about anything shifting. So here I have a little cheat sheet. And yes, you know, I mentioned in my last video, I love spreadsheets. So I'm a planner. I wanted to know which color I was putting where ahead of time. And so here we go. So I have my little grip mat, my smallest grip mat, and it's holding my ink pad. And the first color that we're going to be using is Ocean Breeze. And by the way, I'm using Pink Fresh inks for this card. So you'll see this little mask that I created or a, whatever you want to call it, a negative mask, a secondary stencil. You'll see that I can just place it over these little images and then I can just color each one its own color and I don't need to worry about getting ink in the one next to it. So I could I have taken a really small detail blending brush and done each of them a different color? I suppose I could have. Um, it would have taken longer because I would have had to be super careful and you know some of these little diamonds are just so close to each other and this just makes it so fast and I can reuse these little pieces of paper I can just stash these little masks that I made with the stencil and I can use them for future cards so that yellow color was lemon whip by the way and this is my green color this is meadow and for this first stencil, I'm using my lighter shades of all these colors. And I'm kind of breezing through some of this because, you know, it's all the same. So for my orange, the lighter color is Peach Fuzz. And again, just once you create this little mask, it's really easy. And you, so this is a layering set of stencils. There are two stencils like I showed you, but you can do what I'm doing if you just have one stencil that has, you know, little designs on it and you want to color each design a different color. Just create a mask. And usually, you know, cutting a circle will suffice usually or a square or whatever your design happens to be. So here's what the first stencil looks like. And now we're just going to place the second stencil on top. And it's really easy to line up because there's kind of register marks on this stencil that cover what you already colored. So it's just really easy to line up. So now we're going to kind of work backwards. My darker pink is Passion Fruit. And, you know, I just tried to pick a darker and lighter color of each shade. So this is Apricot. This is my darker orange color.
And so now I'm coming with a sweet mustard. This was supposed to be my darker yellow color. And I'm going to ink up the first one. And at, it was at this point where I decided I'm gonna lift the stencil and see what's going on. And I decided the, not only the yellow, but also the orange, there just wasn't enough contrast between my lighter and darker colors. So I'm before I forget, I'm gonna just come in back in with that orange color, the darker orange, and I'm just gonna darken all of that up a bit. Now I'm coming back in with that sweet mustard. I'm going to fill in all of those yellows first before I come in with this darker marigold color because I had already colored that first one with the sweet mustard and I just wanted the base of all of it to be the same so you didn't have one yellow looking a little different than all the others. Here's my darkest green, Emerald City. And then here's my darkest blue, which is Aquamarine. Now everything was going so well and so easily and I was so happy with how it was going in the, this very last one. Look at this. Do you see the orange in the corner there? I'm not going to see it until right when like oops. So then I noticed it. It was too late. I'm going to blame the dogs. They had, I don't know what they were doing, but it's their fault. <laughs> it's like the dogs ate my homework. And so here's the final reveal. And aside from that minor mistake, I am so pleased with how it came out. But then I remembered I had meant to die cut this panel first before stenciling it because there is kind of a matching die. It's a background die. So here it is. This is the folk art background die. And yes, that is my colored panel behind it. And yes, I was crazy enough to try to die cut it after I stenciled it. So I, I don't know. I just decided to throw caution to the wind. I had already messed up that orange and blue. And I figured if I have to re-stencil it, it's not going to be that hard. But look at this. I, it came out like almost exactly on point. And here's how I did it. I just put pencil marks in the center of each of my flowers. And like, so here's, you can still see a pencil mark. And I just lined up the holes in the die to, and you, so I could see the pencil marks underneath those holes. And I taped it on and I hoped for the best and it worked out. Is it completely perfect? No. Am I going to redo it? No. So here's, here's what it is um, with all the holes poked out. And you can see when you put it on dark background, those holes really kind of stand out. And here's what it looks like on white. And it's just more tone on tone. And you can still see all that texture, but it's just, you know, a more subtle look. And that's what I was going for because I'm going to have so much detail on the rest of the card with the wreath I'm going to put on. So... I'm taping that white panel to the back and then I will tape that onto or glue it to my green base. So here's the wreath. This is the beaded, beaded wreath die. And I have all the little pieces on my stencil mat. And first I'm just going to take my inexpensive little ink dauber and I'm using that darkest green color, Emerald City. And I'm just adding a little bit of shading to the wreath just to add a little dimension. And then I'm going to take the lighter green, the meadow color, and I'm just going to blend some ink onto these leaves and greenery. And I will end up coming in back in with some of that darker Emerald City to make some of the foliage darker. And then I'm just going to quickly ink up the pink and yellow little berries. And I actually do add a few orange berries to the final wreath as well. All right, so here's what the wreath looks like, and here's what it looks like with vellum behind it. I think it looks much better with the vellum because it just mutes that background enough for the wreath and everything that I'm going to put on the wreath to stand out more. So I just cut a piece of vellum with a circle die, and I'm gluing that to the back of my wreath, and then I can just glue the wreath to my card base. And 
So I wanted to add a bow to the bottom of my wreath. This is the twine and bows die set, super cute. It has all these little bows you can cut and it ha has that long die that you can cut some thin twine. I'm coloring my bow with passion fruit, which was the darkest pink color I had used. And I've glued my foliage onto the wreath and now I'm just at, you can see how I'm just adding some more in to fill it up. And I'm gonna glue my little bow on and I'll just hold that with my finger until it dries to make sure it's on there nice and secure. All right, so here I've added my sentiment. This is the print and script Mary Christmas die. And I obviously used the script version of the Mary. And for my sub sentiment, I'm using this sentiment. It actually said cozy Christmas wishes and I just partially stamped it. Um, and then I cut it out with one of the little matching itty bitty strips dynamics and then trimmed it to the size I needed it. And because it's going to be straddling that Mary, which I had actually stacked up, I think that's stacked up like three high. Um, I'm going to add some little foam strips on the very edges of that sentiment. And then I'll glue the rest and add that on. And I will use my T-square ruler to make sure it's on there nice and straight. And there it is. There's the finished card. You can see the nice gold cardstock that I had used for the Mary and I added a little gold pearl to the bow to tie into that the gold on the sentiment and there we are and I'm I just absolutely love how this turned out all right now we're going to make a different card we're going to take that same folk art background die and instead of cutting it we're going to emboss with it and so I'm just using a blue card panel and I'm following the instructions for creating a sandwich on my universal plate system for my Spellbinders machine. So just follow the instructions on your machine for embossing with the die. So here's the little rubber mat and here's the adapter plate. Again, I'm just following the instructions on my machine. And so this is gonna be a lot more subtle than then the first card. So it doesn't poke out the little holes because we didn't die cut with it. But all of the texture is still there. You can still, you still have the little outlines of all the little stars. And so now I'm using my A2 layers die set to cut this down to four by five and a quarter inches, which is, I use that panel size a lot on my cards. It leaves a nice margin around the edge. All right, now I have some new ink from Simon Says Stamp. This is their Rainbow Splash ink that they just released for Stamp Timber. And this is the C color, which is gorgeous. And I'm just gonna ink up the edges of my panel to kind of create a glow in the center. And you can see this ink is really saturated and really juicy and it blends so easily. Okay, so I'm putting it back on my grip mat. Again, this is the five and a half by eight and a half inch grip mat. And now I'm coming back in with that stencil that we used on the first card. And I'm just lining it up with the design that was embossed into the panel. And again, the grip mat will grip the paper and the stencil, so I don't need to worry about it shifting. So I'm going to use the same ink, that C color, and now I'm just going to do some simple stenciling. And this goes really fast because I'm just using one color. And once I'm done with that, what I'm going to do is come back in with that same ink. So there's there's the reveal. I'm coming back in with that same ink and I'm coming around the edges again just to darken it up a little bit. Now I could have used a darker shade, um, even maybe black around the edges to make to make it even darker, but I don't know. I just decided to go with this one shade and I just love this color so much. All right. Now I am laying the stencil back down on my panel 
and I have used pixie spray on the back of it. So it's clinging to the paper. It's clinging actually to this little scrap piece of paper behind it. And that's because we're going to use paste. And I am using lunar paste for the first time. This is the no diving color. This is from Simon Hurley. And you can see it's kind of shimmery and very creamy. And I have my little stencil pal and one of my spatulas out. And Simon Hurley actually has a tool very similar to this stencil pal. Um, and you'll see what I use it for. So usually when I use paste, I just kind of glob on a bunch at the top and then I'll wipe the excess off on my stencil pal. And then I'll just drag it. Now, usually I don't start with a ton of paste, although this time I probably could have added more um, because I did have to come back in a few times which is not a big deal, but I can put the excess back in the jar and I'm not used to that because normally when I'm using paste, it's I use the clear moonstone shimmer paste from Tonic and I'm usually using it with distress inks and, you know, distress inks react with, with liquid or water or whatever. So I'm not used to being able to put paste back in the jar. Now this paste I could have put back in the jar, but um, my moonstone paste gets colored and then I can't put it back in the jar. So this could have been a lot easier if I just put on enough paste to begin with. Um, but that's okay. All right, when I'm done, I'm going to take all these tools and I'm going to take it to the sink in my laundry room. And oh, how I wish I had a sink in my craft room. But I'm going to wash those off right away. And here's what I do with paste after I start the bottle. I take some press and seal. You can take saran wrap or whatever. And I'm just going to press it down into the paste just so there's no air getting into this bottle. And I'll screw the cap back on and that will hopefully help it not dry out. All right, so here are my elements that I'm going to put on the front. This is the Folk Art Reindeer Die. Again, this is new from Waffle Flower. And there's two pieces to this die. And the, so the top piece I had cut out of red and also of white, and I kind of cut the white head off so that I would have two colors for that top. And I put a little red nose on. And this frame is the Pinking Rectangle Frames die, and I stacked it three high. I, did, I cut it three times. And the sentiment, this is the Comfort and Joy Sentiments from Spellbinders. This is actually a glimmer plate, and it has a matching die so this is actually the matching die, and the reason it has multiple banners is because um, the glimmer plate itself actually has multiple sen sentiments. And so you hot foil it all at once, and then you die cut it all at once, which is such a big time saver. And so there's a few of the other sentiments, and I hot foiled it in red. And now I cut a second banner out of red, and I'm going to glue glue them together, leaving the red showing at the bottom just to create kind of a drop shadow effect. Now I'm coming in with a white gel pen. I'm going to add some highlights. Um, you saw me kind of write on my hand first. That kind of just warms up the gel pen and, and helps it uh, just smooth it out. I'm not extremely comfortable adding white gel pen highlights. I think it adds so much to the end result, but I sometimes I forget or sometimes I, I'm just intimidated, but I chose to do it this time and I'm glad I did. So I glue the frame to my panel and I use my, my T-square to make sure it's straight. And now I'm gonna add some thin foam squares to the back of my reindeer. And I'm gonna glue the sentiment to the bottom of the frame. I'm trying to show you the shine from the lunar paste here. It's, I don't know, it, the camera doesn't quite capture it. I think the second picture that you'll see here of the finished card will show you a little bit more of that shine. And I love it. I love how different these cards looked and they both used the same stencil, the same background dye, and I just love them both. That's it for me today. Uh, let me know which one you like the most in the comments below. And while you're at it, um, like this video and hopefully subscribe. Um, I would love to have you here. Thanks again. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.